Hello, my name is Kevin Ho, President and CEO of ComTank. Today, I'd like to tell you a story of a situation that I feel could have gone extremely wrong at a project I went to where I was going to the site to become the emergency rescue provider in the event that a confined space entry went wrong. And I want to explain what I saw at that site that I feel was an issue. First of all, from my perspective, when I arrive at the site, I'm looking at two points, not a single line. In order to be put in a situation where I feel confident, so I'd like to explain the proper way to rescue somebody is not to take a line and hook them back here and yank them out of a tank. So the site I was on, where I watched somebody lowered 35 feet into a tank on one line, on one wire, I was asked during the rescue, you're going to drop a line in and grab the person, if depending on the circumstances, and hook them and yank them out as fast as you can. And I explained them to that person, that's not how that was going to happen. So I'd like to show you, without getting real technical, a real short video here on how we would actually take somebody out of the tank. Now remember, the person in the tank should be on two lines, the working line and then the extra line, their safety, their backup line. Now, let's assume for a second that Ann is going to rescue me. I'm now on the bottom of the tank, injuries, we're not sure what we have, but she's going to attempt a rescue. This is how it should look. There are two points of contact here that I need to be connected to prior to having the lines, my lines, removed. Now, once we're properly connected, she will then transfer me from my lines, my two lines, to her lines. We're connected. I'm the victim here in this situation. I'm the accident victim. The first step in this situation for the rescuer is to either ascend to a safe location or descend to a safe location. Not always are you being pulled out of a situation. So, and the most important part that I wanna make sure is clear in this video is that the rescuer is able to see the accident victim and make decisions as to my condition, whether or not I am conscious or unconscious, whether I have a broken limb or whether I'm bleeding profusely, she's reporting that information and is reporting that above in this situation at either 35 or 50 feet, the last project I was on, she's reporting to the rescue crew that's on the way to provide the most effective response they can for the situation I'm in. That's why it's critical to be not yanked out from up, cranked out 50 feet alone or also to be not with somebody who's able to report my condition from second to second. In closing, remember, OSHA requires fall protection when you're on a construction site and you're operating at six feet in height or more. That's number one. But number two, I think the most important thing I'd like to get across is whether or not you're going into a hole 50 feet deep or into a tank, which we at CompTank do constantly, and we're at 50, 100 feet sometimes being lowered. The number one thing is to have a mitigation plan. I find the most important piece of the operation is to make sure that I have a point that I'm attached to that makes sense. I see people connecting to piping and they're being lowered, whether it's their, their work line or their backup line, and they're attaching to things that are threaded, rusted fittings. If you find a pipe and it's welded, and you find a pipe that's threaded pipe, go to the welded pipe. You know, just think it through very carefully. The point you're attaching to may make the difference whether you come out of that alive or not.